I, I did know. I'm so worried. Don't know. Oh, no, shut <laughs> <up>. <laughs> it's loud. Thanks, Sorry. Sounds like Donald and me. It sounds like, wow. Hello, hello, hello. You gotta say something godless. Hello. <laughs> this is God speaking. <laughs> Put the ears back on. <laughs> Oh, this is okay, fantastic. It's, it's still too loud. Way too loud. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> yeah, this how those are being recorded. <laughs> oh, you're going to start over. We're not ready. Uh -oh. I haven't told you I'm praying yet. <laughs> Go ahead and pray because you're on. <laughs> well, Father, we just come before you in the name of our Savior, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you for your, the Holy Spirit that always guides us and leads us to you. We thank you that we have ears to hear tonight, Lord God. And we're coming before you just rejoicing because we know your word is truth. So bless these, your people that are listening tonight and all of us that are here. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're, tonight we're going to talk about our, our, start talking about our church vision. And how on earth did I get this vision? It wasn't me, I can tell you that. It was a, a, a God thing. But when we're dealing with the church vision, we also need a vision. One of my visions is Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved in your whole house. I see all my family in heaven. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I'm believing for every one of them are going to be there in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so uh, another thing that I see about myself is before I die, I'm going to be living in the will of God. Where Paul said, uh, it's no longer me but Christ that lives in me. I might have to die daily, but that's where I want to be. And so, uh, so not only tonight when we're just talking about the church vision, but we also need a vision for ourselves. It's just like when I go into an, another place to minister, I go under that ministry unless they're part of our churches. And I serve under that vision. And so when you come in here, we're serving under this vision. And uh, I believe this vision can, can fit any church. It's just it, it, how we came up with this was just a miracle. And so in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. But the but he that keeps the law, happy is he. So, and we're going to, I just want to go through our five very basic vision. Number one, we are a praise and worship church where we preach and teach the word of the Lord. And we will start uncovering these things. Why is it so important to praise the Lord? Why is it so important to preach and teach the word? And what is it all for? Equipping the saints for the work of their ministry. And number three is excellency in ministry, commitment, and discipline. And that's what you were talking about tonight, Carol. And, you know, it says in the last uh, verse, I believe, chapter 5 of Prover uh, Proverbs, without discipline, you're going to die. And number four, raising up sons. And this has been our ministry from the beginning, putting people in ministry. Number five, world ministry. And so when he says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, not just in the church, but throughout the world. So we all need a world vision. Amen. That's why I teach, Clinton, if you're not going, you send. Hmm. How do you send? With prayer and money. It, <clears throat> missions cost money. Mm -hmm. And we've got people out there that need help that we're involved with. Amen? Amen. Amen. And our slogan has been for years, each one reach one, each one teach one, each one send one. And you know, even on our monthly prayer list, we talk about who's your, who are you discipling? Have you been praying for someone to disciple? That's our whole ministry. Go into all the world, make disciples, not converts. Supposedly, 80% of the converts go back to the world. Why? Because they've never been discipled. Mm. They don't know how to fight. They don't know how to fight in the spirit, how to maintain. They're on sand and not on rock. And so that slogan, it just, one of these days somebody's going to get that. We've only been said, I've had other churches use it <laughs> and talk about it. 
uh, Proverbs 29, 18, uh, the King James, where there is no revelation or vision, the people perish or cast off restraint. Then I have all these, uh, a lot of these other translations. They run wild without a vision. And this vision is a prophetic vision. Uh, become demoralized. Without a vision, we become de demoralized. What do we, we just work, go to work every day and come home and sleep, get up and go to work again? Is that my whole life? You know, no vision, that's the way you feel. Mm -hmm. They're saying, I forgot how many employees are so, they hate their jobs. And it's costing billions of dollars every year because they keep quitting their jobs and training alone is so expensive. And if you don't love God, how can you love anything you're doing anyway? If you love God, it doesn't matter what you're doing. I'll never forget these monks. who I read a story about these monks and they were so mad at this one monk because he got his ministry time doing dishes. And these others were climbing up trees and going into the wilderness. And they asked him, why do you do dishes when you're supposed to be uh, worshiping the Lord? You're supposed to be in your closet. He says, are you kidding? I get more out of doing the dishes. I'm helping God's people. <laughs> and, and he's singing the whole time he's doing dishes. So whatever God turns you on, that's what you do. Amen. Amen. See, that's what you're called to do. If you see something wrong in the church, it's your job to fix it because you saw it. Or talk about it. You're anointed to do the job. Aren't you glad you got a job? <laughs> and another one says, and follow no, they follow no moral standards. Boy, think about that one, what's going on today in the world. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. A nation without God's guidance is a nation without order. Hmm. But happy is he who keeps the law. And that law is talking about the teachings. In 1 Samuel 15, 22, and, and I do want to read that because we could also see it here in Proverbs, but I really like 1 Samuel 15 and 22. And, and this is where uh, Saul was told to do something and he didn't do it. And so he's going to lose his kingdom over it. And so 1 Samuel chapter 15 and starting with verse 22 so Samuel said, Has the Lord great delight in burden offerings and sacrifices? So here's what he's going to say. As in obedience, the, obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And for some reason, we would rather sacrifice than obey. Hmm. And it ends up costing us. And to heed or to listen. That word is the word for listening. And to listen than the fat of rams, rams, for rebellion, and the word as is not in the original, for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. And what is witchcraft? A controlling spirit. And stubbornness is idolatry, iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also will reject you from being king. So we see here that it's better to obey than to do anything else. Amen? Amen? If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And so, uh, the NIV Study Bible says, uh, the word vision here, vision is revelation. And revelation, it, in the book of Revelation, there's no S on it, it's revelation. It means to uncover, take the blanket off. And so, what is a revelation? You, you get a revelation of what it is. The, like the covers have been taken off so you can see what the word means. Yeah. Amen? It's a message from God through a prophet, a prophetic vision. The CSB says, but one who follows divine instructions will be happy. And I do want you to turn to this because, and I, I know I use this a lot, 1 Timothy 1.18. What Paul is telling Timothy, he says, that we can fight a good fight with the prophecies that have been spoken over us. And see, that has to be part of your vision. And I've, I've received many visions, uh, many prophetic words from different prophets. And one was in 2003, I believe, in 2005, and it didn't happen until about four years ago. And so, just because the word that the Lord comes to you saying, does that mean you're ready to, re to do it? Hmm. 
we, we, we forget about the process. Moses, it took him 80 years to fulfill what God wanted him to do. Mm. David was very young when he was ordained as king, yet he didn't have the crown until he was 30. Jesus at 12 knew who he was. He says, shouldn't I be about my father's business? He didn't start till he was 30. Because as a rabbi, you had to be 30 years old. And you see how God had to train Elijah 10 years he washed his hands and feet. Never was used. And all of a sudden, one of the kings said, where's that servant of Elijah? Think about that. Spiritual sons. Where's that spiritual son? Hmm. Send him to Mexico. <laughs> and so, no, because this is something with you to fight with for your vision. This charge I commit to you, we're in 18, 118 of 1 Timothy. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage, wage a good warfare. So you can wage a warfare on prophecies that have been spoken over on, on you. That's good. And, and, and that is so important. And I, I notice in, in well, well, I'll share with you tonight, in Habakkuk, five different times this, this word has been given to me. In Jeremiah 1, which is our whole ministry, five different times since 1978 that's been given to me. And so five is the number of grace. Maybe I'm ready to start doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I hope I don't have to wait another two years till I'm 80. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I feel like I'm in boot camp just being trained to, for something special. Mm. And that's the way we should all feel. We're just being readied. That's why you can't give up. You've you got to run like you're the only one that's going to make it. You can't wait for anybody. That's the biggest mistake people do. Well, I'm going to wait for my husband. I'm going to wait. No. Somebody's got to be the leader. Yeah. And so in, in 617, remember Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. So we know there is a fight. Amen. And, and uh, uh, those of you that want to, in 1 Samuel, I guess we should have stayed over there for you. In 1 Samuel, this is when Samuel is being spoken to by the Lord. And we find out why there was no word. You know, for many years before Christ came, Malachi was the last time God spoke through prophets to Israel. And it was, there was a lot of years between the two before he spoke again. And uh, notice it says in chapter 3 and verse 1, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And... This is why. Look at chapter 2 and verse 22. Now Eli was very old, and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel, and how they lay with the women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meetings. And look at verse 29. Why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offerings, which I have commanded in my dwelling place? And honor your sons more than me. And where we just read in 1 Samuel 15, Samuel, uh, Saul said, basically, I was a man pleaser. I wanted to please the people. And Paul said, if I'm a man pleaser, I can't please God. So we have to be careful about that. And... In your notes, I have uh, also 29 to 36, but just just so you get the drift, his, his sons were really doing some bad things. And so the prophet said to Eli, your sons are all going to die, and your seed is not going to go on. I'm taking away the promise. And so this is why a lot of times, if we're in sin, how are we going to get the word of the Lord? Mm -hmm. how, how, how are we going to listen? If we, you're hiding something, you can't hide. If you think you can hide your sin from God, you've got to reap what you sow. You know, a couple of places I see, even where Job said, I would not sin with my eyes. Look at 
the men and women that are hooked on pornography now, and what it does to marriages, it destroys. And, and we forget that our eye gate, what, can, what it can do. In a couple of places it says, don't, don't sin with your eyes. And Jesus said, if you look across the street with lust, you commit adultery. So what do you do? Don't look. Mm. Or if you look, just say, man, you made a beautiful Lord. And ended at that. And Carol is my sister. That's what the Bible says. You look at women as your, your younger sister. And older men, you're supposed to uh, uh, have respect for the older ones. <laughs> the, the elders. We should respect each other. And then look at 313. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. And nepotism in Mexico is unbelievable bad. And the pastors always want their kids to take over. You, you can't do that. Especially in ministry, you can't do that. If it works, that's fine, but you can't make a kid do something he's not made to do. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Yeah. amen. Uh, vision. It's a sight, a dream, a revelation, and there's all the, the meanings of that word. But I learned this a long time ago, and some of you need to hear this because you're going to go through something like this. I put down, number one, the birth of the vision. That's when we learned, okay? We learned the vision. What was the, what was the birth of the vision? Jesus came. Mm. This is where we get this. Number two, there's the death of the vision. He died. I remember when my wife told me about 10 years ago, Al, throw away your Bible, quit listening to all these preachers, and start all over again. Best thing that I ever did. Mm. She said, get rid of your notes and start letting God teach you. Mm. And that's why I very seldom ever read anything of anybody's. Because I don't want to get messed up. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, I don't know if you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying I, I don't use, you know, my... Uh, I, look up, I look up things and I look at different commentaries. But I want to make sure what I'm saying is, is at least getting close. You know. Uh, so, what's the death of the vision? I had to unlearn. I had to start over again. And we have to do that every once in a while. The only thing we're, we're sure about, he came, he died, he rose. If we all agree on that, we could be in unity. There's the resurrection of the vision. We, re, we relearn. Now we learn all over again. What happened? He arose. Does that make sense? So a lot of times you've got the vision and you wonder, why isn't it happening? That's the death. That's the wilderness. I know one apostle, he says, I don't want to be around people that haven't been through the wilderness. Because they don't understand me. Mm. Jacob had to have a, uh, his side, remember? He lived yeah, yeah. the rest of his life because he wrestled with God. And that's where you wrestle with God in the dry places. Mm. I know none of you know what I'm talking yeah. about. But that's... <laughs> Philippians 1.6 says, Be in confidence of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you shall complete it unto the end. Amen? Amen? And so, remember, he's beginning, but there's a training time. In Hebrews 12.2, uh, and there's many scriptures I, I give you, but looking under Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. See, he's the one that's going to do it through us. Yeah. There is a time of preparation with your calling and setting you apart and, and, and being chosen. When he says in John 15, 16, I've chosen you, you did not choose me. And I have Romans 8, 29 and 2 Corinthians 3, 18. We're, we're supposed to become like him. Our spiritual man is supposed to become like him. Uh, now I have the record to record the vision. So we're in Habakkuk, and one of the minor prophets. It's right right after Naom, and, and it's almost it's Zephaniah. It's almost right to Zechariah and Malachi. If you had the right Bible, it's on page uh, eight twenty three. 
and and I, I, I'm sharing when I'm ministering. A lot of times I share what's happened to me, so you kind of have an idea of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And this verse in chapter one of Habakkuk, Habakkuk in Spanish, Habakkuk. This one five was given to me five different times. Uh, I think the earliest this was given to me was in 1997. But five different prophets have given me this. And notice what it says. And I keep hearing other prophecies, like when I was in Mexico. My last years are going to be greater than the first years. So I still have a lot to look forward to. My body doesn't seem to agree with that. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to do it a lot easier. <laughs> Not work so hard. <laughs> Look among the nations, or the imaginations, and watch. Be utterly astonished, Al, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it would told you. And so, something I have to, I'm looking forward to, I don't quite understand what that means. But it's greater than I've ever seen. Amen. That's all that matters to me. Amen. Now what do I do with that? I put it on the shelf, and when it happens, I'll say, Boy, those guys are true prophets and gals, right? Mm -hmm. I don't run with anything anybody tells me unless it's just confirming what I already know. So remember, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall all things be established. Both of these, I've had five, that's the number of grace, and we are saved by grace, and we're moving in the Spirit by grace. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So here's, here's how I got the vision, started the vision. In chapter 2. I will stand my watch. Yeah, I have it on here. I, I will, my thinking, my walls, stand. And I have a lot of scriptures. Uh, in Psalm 110, verse 2, rule in the midst of your enemies, because we know we're to put on the whole armor of God. Galatians 5.1, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. James 4.7, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. I will stand my, that's, that's me, that's you that are listening, watch and, and set myself on the rampart or the tower or the fortress and watch. What is he doing? He's watching. Remember, a few weeks ago, we just ministered on the watchman ministry, which is the eagle ministry. And what does that mean? To lean into the future. Why? Because prophets can see into the future. Hmm. And, and it says, you know, that when the Holy Spirit comes, when the, He gives us the Holy Spirit, He's going to show us things to come. come. And so you can stand on that word. But a seer, that's what the word seer is. It's a prophet. He sees into and they're to warn us of things to come, like they warned them about the drought in Acts. And watch to see what he will say to me. So I want you to notice where to watch he, and wait and see what he will say to me. And, and I have back here, and what, page 49, and what I will answer when I am corrected. <laughs> And listen to what I wrote. And he answered only after the Lord corrected him, knowing that the Lord did, did, wa did not want to hear his excuses. Genesis 3.12, the woman you gave me, Lord, she made me do it. I couldn't help it. <laughs> you know, so he was going to keep quiet. You know, right away we have an excuse. Yeah. Come on, come on guys, I know how, what we're like. We have the excuse out before the, the, the question's even asked. Yep. So he, here he is, standing on the watch. I will stand my watch, verse 1, and set myself on the tower, and watch to see what he will say to me, and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Mm -hmm. Write the vision. Every room of the church, we have the, our vision, the five things on the wall. And this vision, because I know I didn't know what I was doing when I was doing this, so I can't take the credit for it. Write the vision, make it plain. And they, uh, I have here on your notes, it says, 
uh, the vision was to be recorded on tablets of baked clay so God's word would be preserved and even more important, publicized. And so this is a serious thing, a vision. Without it, we're going to perish. We're going to run wild. Because what are we here for? All I do is work, sleep, go to work, sleep, go to work and sleep, and watch football on Sunday. You know, and, and, and then you get in a rut. Mm -hmm. And boy, when you're in that rut, it's hard to get out of it. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. We're to run with this vision. Paul says, run like you're the only one that's going to make it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and you're at a church where I want to teach you to be able to go out and run with it. Amen. 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 For the vision is yet for an appointed time. It took 66 years for this to happen. So I still have more time. Amen. I've only got 47, maybe 48 years in. So I've got a few more years left before the vision should come. But this was talking about the Chaldeans that are going to come and destroy. Mm -hmm. But see, I have it in your notes also. It says in Romans, it's also in, in Corinthians, that all this stuff in the Old Testament is for our learning. Mm -hmm. So... Even Matthew 24 could be for 70 A.D. totally, but it could mean for the future too. Amen. This could be for the future. And this is what I got to write out our vision. Because this is why I wrote our vision. Because God said to. <laughs> you know, to me that's that simple. And it's got to be easy to understand. Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. It will not lie. Amen. Though it tarries, you know, I'm waiting here, Lord. Waiting. Though it's going to take time. Wait. Wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait and know that I am God. There's so many scriptures about waiting. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So you have to have faith in your vision. Carol, you were talking about how you want your latter years. There's so many things. We could all look back, and like Scott says, you don't want to look back. We want to start out right now. We've all blown it. But right now is a new day. Every day when you get up, that's the only day you've got to deal with. Mm -hmm. And when you start dealing in the future, dealing in the past, you're a mess. You just live one, one day at a time. And, and I, I want to read verse 4 because it's the only time in the Old Testament it talks about faith, I believe. This type of faith. Behold, and it's three times in the New Testament. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So even your vision. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And... You know, there's a lot of our vision that we have seen. And, and there's a lot we need to improve on, like excellency in ministry. Just, just these simple little things. <laughs> and, and then I'm, I'm on the front of your sheet. 1 Samuel 3.10. Now the Lord came and stood and called, as other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answers, speak for your servant hears. Servants hear. Amen. Come on, everybody say that. Amen. Servants Servant hear. Jesus was a servant. I only do what my Father says. I only do what my Father tells me to do. Guess what we're supposed to be doing? And Sunday, Sunday I'm going to minister on, Lord willing, uh, my sheep hear my voice. So if you're not hearing His voice, you're not saved. It's that simple. That's good. <laughs> come on let's be honest with each yeah. other how come God never speaks to me if you understand anything that's being said tonight God spoke to you mm -hmm. you know only once I heard God's voice and it was very serious and he said he didn't call me Albert he called me Al Al then the second I thought I was going crazy when I'm hearing voices and that's them. the second time when he said Al Al when God speaks, there's a fear. And let me show that to you. This has been given to me too. <clears throat> Chapter 3, 
Verse 2. O Lord, I have heard your speech, and I was afraid. When you hear the voice of the Lord, you, you know, God told me to do this, and you're here one day, and because I didn't have you preach, you never come back, but God told you to be here. You didn't hear from God. Especially when I tell them they have to sit for six months. But God told them to be here. No, God didn't tell them to be here. If God really spoke to you, you'd be doing it because you'd be horrified not to. I'm serious. I quit the ministry that day. Let me tell you, after you got done talking to me, I didn't quit the ministry. <laughs> it was fearful. Very fearful. And that fearful is a reverence that you can't experience until you hear that voice. O oh Lord, I have heard your speech, and I was afraid. O oh Lord, revive your work. Yes, Lord. Make it come alive in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Amen. And so here, because you hear me say 25 times in the New Testament, he has an ear. 25 is the number for the forgiveness of sins. Proverbs 19.27, Cease listening to instructions, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. In Romans 10.17, where it says uh, how we get faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the uh, vine says faith is a conviction based upon hearing. So how can we be convicted if we don't hear it? Amen. Come on. How can you get convicted if you're not hearing it? Amen. It, and it's also, the Strong's calls it assurance or belief. And I put in Hebrews 11.1, 1, which we all know. Now faith is the assurance of things so forth. The evidence. See, I've got to see this vision of this church and my family. I have to see it already done. When I, when I pray at night for my family, I, I don't say, Lord, I sure hope you're going to save my family. I thank him. Mm. I just thank him. I said, Lord, I'm standing on your word, and it says my whole household. I'm claiming them and all, even those I don't even know. <laughs> I'll know them in heaven. Praise God. Matthew 13, 19. If we do not understand the seed, that is the word of God, it can be stolen from us. Satan comes immediately and steals the seed. So how many times do we go to church and we don't understand what's being said? We get on a high, sometimes we even get healed, and by the time we're out in the car, we've lost it. Hmm. Because we didn't understand. We didn't ask anybody. We're too prideful. Mm. If you know all the answers, you're in serious trouble. That's why we need the body. Mm. We all have a part. I only have a part. And I will answer when I am corrected. Habakkuk 2.2 2, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets. That he may, I'm on the back page. I'm just reading the black right now. I didn't realize time's almost out. And he ran, and he may ran, run, excuse me, who reads it. And I, I love that when Paul said, run like you're the only one that's going to make it. There's only one going to go over the finish line. And that's how you have to see it, that you're going to make it. So if I'm to be running, that means, what do I have to do? When I used to compete in tournaments and I, when I wrestled in high school, how did I get ready? Practice. Practice. Working out. Working out. I couldn't run up the mountain right now like you do, Scott. I couldn't do that. Oh, don't run up the mountain. <laughs> oh, we're even walking up there. We were just going up on the fifth floor in, that, uh, in Mexico, and Pete and I, <gasps> <laughs> you know, because of, since my surgery, I really haven't been able to work out uh, like I used to. And boy, I can feel it. And I, I could see my body sagging because exercise profiteth a little, but godliness produces something. Faithfulness. And so we need uh, order in our lives. Mm. And we can't let anything control us but Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. And because Psalm 133, I, I, I use that a lot because we need unity. Amos 3.3, 3. how on earth can we two walk together unless they be in, in, in agreement? And I put down number four here, the vision is yet for an appointed season or time. But at the end, 
The vision will speak and it will not lie. Number six, though it tarries, wait for it. Number seven, because it will surely come, it will not tarry, delay, wait on the Lord. And there's the scriptures on Habakkuk 2.4. And I want you to notice in, in chapter 3, at verse 17, and, and, and this some of us need to really, because when we're in the wilderness, we don't understand. It's like, how come God doesn't hear me? How come my prayers aren't getting, getting answered? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening? You know, all these questions start coming up. And notice what he says, and I, I, I said this years ago, and I said, I'm going to start saying this. I don't care if nobody ever gets healed, I'm still praying for the sick, believing they're going to get healed. Amen. I don't care if nobody ever gets baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'm going to teach it. I don't care if nobody ever gets water baptized, I'm still going to teach it. Because it's what the Word says to do. Yes. So it doesn't matter if nobody else wants it, I do. Amen? Amen. And so notice in 317, though the fig tree may not blossom, uh, your ministry is not blossoming. Your, your company that you're trying to build is, is losing money. Your church is failing. What does he say? Though the fig tree may not blossom. Man, I planted, I've seeded, I've watered, I've fertilized it, and i got to wait four years for my first fruit. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, though the labor of the oil may fail, and the fields, in other words, no anointing. What happened to the anointing, Lord? Come on, we've all been there too. Mm -hmm. And the fields, the world, yield no food. You're getting nothing from your crops. Lord, I'm giving, I'm tithing, I'm giving offerings. Where, when, it, when, do, when did you put the bread out in the water and it comes back? <laughs> you know, a lot, a lot of people argue about that. That's probably the problem. You just got to believe God. Yeah. <laughs> Don't argue about it. Just do it. And the fields yield no fruit. Through the flock may be cut off from the fold. And there be no herd in the stalls. Yet, even if all this, even if I don't feel God, even if I don't sense God, even if I'm, things aren't going right for me right now, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. That means even in this trial, I'm not going to slip and fall. You ever watch a deer go up the side of a mountain, a hill? Oh my God, running full blast, right up, just like this. A fence, just like that. <clears throat> solid. He's on solid rock. And he will make me walk on my high hills. Hills. Amen. So we see... The vision has got to be plain, it's got to be simple, but that's why I wrote down a vision for the church many years ago. Amen. Father, I just ask you to bless this word in Jesus' name. Yes. Holy Spirit, let us all catch the vision, especially those of us that are part of God's Grace Church. And Lord, those of us that need our own personal vision, Lord God. In Jesus' name, bless this word, Lord. Let us take it and fulfill your calling. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise God.